And welcome back to the Paul Dalton Details channel. Welcome back to the lounge, not the Brat Cave, because they are cutting down hedges and doing grass cutting all over the place. We must have more landscape gardening companies here than anywhere else in Essex. It just seems to be everywhere. I'm surprised there's nothing left. It, it, it should be a desert. They've cut that much down. Anyway, that's why we're in the lounge. Presenting this video, this <laughs> filthy video. No, not one of them. So this is a friend of mine. If you cast your mind way, way back, I did a pump wagon, one of those heavy, you know, those HGV vehicles with the that do the jet in, and it's it was a Christmas video. It's a very long time ago. If you're new to the channel, you you won't remember this. But the owner of that company has got a pickup truck, a Nissan Navara, and it's only been washed once. So it hasn't been washed in four years, and it's like a it's a work truck. We call it a farm truck because it does go on a farm. He's not a farmer. He owns a pump business that does all the jetting, but it goes on building sites and lives on a farm. So a bit of a mixture of, yeah, you can imagine. Before you get too excited, there is some interior shots, but pay attention right to the end with the talky stuff, and I'll talk you through it, why I didn't film the interior. And it hasn't really got much to do with time. It's something else. Anyway, without further ado, get yourself a really big drink. Get a pint. Don't worry about a small one. Don't get a short, because you'll be back up again. You have to keep pausing the video. So get yourself a nice long drink, maybe a cocktail. Try a cocktail. Look, the sun's coming out. It's cocktail weather. And roll the video. Here we go then. Lesson one, how not to drive on rim mats in a pickup truck. Yeah, what you've done there is made a com complete fool of yourself. That's it. Just there. No, it's not ball. You need to go forward, forward. Move the truck forward. What is wrong with you? You utter loser. Oh dear. That's it, put it in drive. Yeah, well done. Right, now let's show everybody just how bad this truck is. So this is what four years of grime upon grime and build up from farmyards and builders, merchants and all sites around the country which have drainage facilities, i.e. a lot of them. Yeah, this goes on to many sites. We have a build-up of clay and farmyard dust and then it rains and it sticks to it and you just end up with this big loopy mess and looks like we've got things growing out the arches. So we're gonna have to rinse it. We're gonna have to get rid of it before we go anywhere near this truck with any chemicals. So in the morning, I actually get in the back of this truck in the truckman part it's got rear quarter light windows in the back. There they are, and they were open. They are open all the time. We ended up spraying them with WD-40 on the hinges and then shutting them up. Don't want to flood the back of his truck out, do we? Oh my days, that's not good. Yep, poor old Henry, he's in for a shock when he gets in there. I don't mean a small child, I mean the vacuum. So here we go, this is the start of a lot of pre-rinsing. Lots and lots of junk coming out of from here, and I apologize for the shaky camera work. There's no way I'm sticking my DSLR under there, no. So after doing this on the first wheel arch, my wife said to me, what's that on your face? Mm. A field? Check out the, uh, the road. Yeah, there is a, a lot of this, and most of it is stuck in, there's like a rebate right there where that mud flap is, and it's all stuck in there. This is where I get an absolute face full. So we're using an MTM Lance with a car scope nozzle. Don't worry, I'll put a link underneath where you can get these nozzles, including this one. This is the swivel head one. And this is to turn it round and then get right in that wheel arch where all the build up is. 
a lot easier and you can just maneuver it around. Now be careful on older cars that have got rust issues, especially on BMWs. My son's BMW has got some bubbles coming up. Yes, we still have that BMW. What's the amount of junk that falls on top of that tire? Oh good, finally I can get to actually clean the tyre and the wheel. Look at the road, oh dear, can get told off. Could have been worse, could have been my driveway. And the one thing I'm itching to do, and you're going to see it, is this bit. How satisfying is this? Now, I'm going particularly slowly on this truck because the build-up is actually... It's more or less set. This is clay, which is set like concrete. And every time I thought I'd got it, I hadn't. There's a groove right there at the back, and it's awful. And of course, you've got those end caps. And what does the dirt do? It goes in the end caps. So you're just constantly flushing this out. So yes, you can get chass chassis cleaners. You try saying that with a mouthful of spaghetti. Uh, chassis cleaners, you can get those. Also, it's going to go down to the stubby gun and just get right underneath. Yeah, right in that end cap. I got bunged up with clay. So bearing in mind we haven't touched this with any tools, we're going to have to do the next stage, which of course is to scrub the wheel arches out. At one point, I thought this was never going to end. I cannot tell you how long this took. Unbelievable. And the one thing I said to the customer was, don't leave it so long. Bring it back a bit sooner. So we can, of course, hit this with chemicals straight away. But it's so bad, I thought I'm going to pre-rinse this. As you can see, we've got some staining from something on the back. Probably one of the many animals he's been shooting. I mean cuddling. That well-known sport, animal cuddling. Yeah, that's what was left on the road. Oh! At last, let's get some chemicals. This is Advanced Wheel Clean from Auto Glim with the Easy Sprayer. So you've got a fan attachment on the end. Thanks for that. Or oh, you've got one of these. 
like a standard nozzle. Twist it, get a different spray pattern. Ready to use, chuck the old funnel in there and away you go, glug, glug, glug. It is fairly gloopy, this stuff. It will cling to the wheel and give you longer cleaning power or longer cleaning time, I should say, it'll dwell time. And it does nip a bit, this fallout remover, stinks. Give us a nice tighten up, not over tighten it, but tighten it so it makes a nice seal. Give it some pumps and that's the release valve there. If you overdo it, it'll just go, you know, make that funny whooshing noise. Got Clean All from Auto Glim. This is our all purpose cleaner. This is a Car Scope new tire scrubbing brush. What's the difference between that and that? Well, that's a tough shine brush, and there's a difference in size. So, we're going to use this APC, the Auto Glim stuff. I've used Clean All for ages now, it's really good stuff. You can dilute it down to one to eight, one to six. I've got a funny feeling we're going to hit these tyres twice. First thing I notice with using this brush, it's not so draggy. It seems to glide over the tyre better. So first rinse, watch what happens on the second attempt. The foam is whiter, so you've got rid of that residue from the sidewall of the tyre. There you go, that's better, isn't it? Next up was APC, the wheel arches, and give those a good scrub. That's the easy brush, the bog brush one. That's never been touched before, so I might as well do it while we're here. It's funny how people don't actually do this. So people have got cars, don't clean this area, yet you put your hands in there to put fuel in once a week, twice a week, whatever. So why not clean it? Because you're gonna get in and then put your hands on your steering wheel. Right, wheel cleaning time. After giving this several pumps, don't overdo it. Make sure the nozzle on the end is tight. I found when I first used this, it dripped everywhere. So just tighten up that black nozzle on the end of the pump sprayer. Top tip for you. Start the first wheel, go to your second wheel and work your way around the car. By the time you get around to the last wheel, it's giving it a decent amount of time to start getting that color change and do the chemical reaction you can see it on the actual disc. It's quite difficult to see it on these rims, but watch the, the sort of wheel slurry. Oh, that's a good word, isn't it? Wheel slurry coming out from the, uh, the spokes. And because it's nice and thick, it will hang around a lot longer and just give you more working time. This is a wheel weasel. Don't ask. This is from Carsco. What a name. So the idea is you put your hands in the straps and then you work your way around the spokes. Now, depending on how many spokes you have on your wheels, this could be rather time consuming. Does it work? Yes, it does. Is it fiddly? Yes, it is a little bit. More about that at the end of the video. I suppose you could wear it as a scarf. Hmm, not a bad idea. So, large Vicam brush, this is a soft tip one. Perfect for jobs like this. So it reactivates it and then it foams back up again.
you think with all this rinsing, this mud would shift on the road. How wrong are you? This mud was hanging around all day. So there you go, that's what it's like when it's dwelling. And just to prove it works, there's a nice little stream going down the road. Aren't oh, that nice? So that's what we were left with. A little bit bruised and battered, but clean. Next up, it's touchless built hamber. So I've got 20 mil of this, one litre of water, 10 mil of product to 500 mil of water. You want to be really picky, 490 mil, as my dear friend Dave Epic Car Show does. And I thought we'll go back to the wellies. I mean, this is a farm truck, so we've got to, you know, be in keeping with the truck. And I'm fed up with getting soggy feet. So you can, of course, put this in a foamer, i.e. a snow foam lance. I prefer doing it this way. I think you get better results. Give this around five to 10 minutes on weather depending, i.e. if it's blazing sunshine, you want to get rid of it. Don't have it hanging around too long. Don't let it dry out. Yeah, chance of that in this country, very, very slim. Oh good, more mud. Now, I know someone's going to ask me, why do I go from bottom to top? It's a simple fact is you will flood the chemicals if you go top to bottom. The water will run over the panel and you won't be able to see where to go. It's a bone of contention in the detailing industry. I've had so many arguments with people. I've always gone from bottom to top. I can see where I'm going. Watch what happens. You are using that jet of water as a tool to remove the grime. You're not just wetting the vehicle. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Are you a bottom to top or top to bottom? And the one thing I did notice, even after rinsing these side steps, I'm still getting more mud come out. And that's a little bit worrying after the amount of pre-rinsing I've been doing. Now pay attention to that rear quarter, just down near the light. Yeah, that's not what you think it is, i.e. watermarks. No, it's not.
And yes, we do the door shuts while we're there. Give those a quick blast out. Come on, farmer piles. Pure cleanse, high definition detail. Good old Shane sent this down. So this is a wax and sealant safe. It will stop moving that bottle around. Oh dear. Yeah, nearly fell off the ladder. Uh, wax and sealant safe shampoo. So you can put 50 to 100 mil in your lance and then shoot the rest in your bucket. Don't waste it. It's got like a fruity scent to this. Yep, yeah, that was a fly, straight in the ear. Nice. And out the other side, but I'll get it in there before you do. Ooh, roof cam. Way. So it's just enough slip and slide action with this uh, shampoo. It's not overly glidey, but then again, it's a decent amount of foam, and of course, it's got decent cleaning power. And if anyone says I'm sponsored, I'm not sponsored. But they did send me a t-shirt. There's a man with a grin on his face, knowing that we're getting somewhere and he can actually stand up and not be groveling underneath a truck trying to shoot out loads of clay. Right, once that was done, it was down for another rinse. It's time to look a bit more smart anyway. Yep, speed up, Paul. Come on. Next up, water spot removal. Yeah, this is a cock up. This is not water spotting. Water spot removal is water spot removal. Oh, there's, that's not, no, that's definitely not. It's actually paint. I found this out afterwards. Always pick the right product for the right job. Yeah, that's paint. There's me going, uh. More about that at the end of the video. Out comes the tar remover, the TARDIS, and a quick scrubber with a scrubbing pad. Evil stuff. Well, we're here anyway. Let's get rid of this. Oh dear. After a rinse and then another water spot removal session, uh, we should be good to go. Yeah, there we go. Right, Kosh Kemi FSC. This is a similar product, but it's not. This actually leaves a finish, i.e. it's a QD, a quick detail. So it leaves some protection, but it also demineralizes the clear coat. So I've been as the sun has come out, we have got a little bit of uh, water spotting going on. It's only very light and we can get rid of it with this, but we can also leave protection. I want to go around this quickly with a quick detailer because I want to get onto the interior. You can do the interior first, no problem, but this truck will be back and it's probably going to get a longer LSP on it, i.e. Longing, longing, longer last day's protection. It does provide a very nice finish though.
good value for money as well. Cost Kemi. I think a litre of this is something like nine pound or ten pounds, something silly like that. It lasts you for quite a while. So on really stubborn areas, especially around chrome trims, you are going to need a dedicated water spot remover. I.e. the Gary's Therapy stuff for several other brands that make it. Oh dear, who did that? Next up, we have a 50-50 mix of CarPro Pearl for the tires and of course those side steps. And of course we have the CarScope tire, tire scrubbing brush. That is not a scrubbing brush, Paul. That is a dressing brush little puck one that lives in its little brush garage. Isn't that nice? Wipe off the excess and you're good to go. So these are the results of around about eight and a half hours of slog. And I'll meet you back in the Pratt Cave. And when I say Pratt Cave, I mean lounge. God, it's been a long day. I should really have bought the products in here from the Pratt Cave, but I don't think my wife will thank me with a white table. Not good. Uh, and yes, that is a turntable behind you. And yes, I have shut the lid before anyone tells me off. I get dust on my turntable. Oh no. And I've got cleaning solution for my records. Oh, if it ain't detailing cars, it's detailing records now. I should start a new channel. Anyway, enough about that. The first thing is the elephant in the room. Why on earth didn't I film the interior? Right. The camera I'm using at the moment has a 300 pound lens on it. It also has the body, which is around about 600 quid, maybe 500, not too sure, depending on the second hand market. The other camera, around about four, 400 pound. Dust and debris do not mix with electronics. If you get that in your lens, in your mechanism, you get it in the camera body, that's it, it's game over, your camera's kaput. I know what you're gonna say, get a zoom lens. Zoom lenses are good, but they're not low light. If you've got low light lens like the one I'm using, you've got to get it in there a little bit closer. Well, I can tell you for now, I was covered when I did this thing. Dust pan and brush. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd have seen it. This thing was howling and it is going to come back and hopefully we can get it looking a bit more respectable. Could have spent hours on this thing, but that is the elephant in the room. That's why I didn't film the interior. Now, when it comes to products, the Auto Glim stuff, ready to use. This is the advanced wheel cleaner get that pump sprayer going. It's not a foamer, by the way. It's just got a fan attachment and then it's got a standard fan or jet, should I say, the jet nozzle, like a normal one where you can just adjust it. But it's very gloopy. This is like a gel-like formula and it does smell a fallout. Get the first wheel done. Get it suitably coated. Try not to get it on the brakes like I did. Then go around the car and do the other wheels. By the time you get around to the first wheel, it's allowed it to dwell and you should get that color change, that reaction. Were these wheels perfect? No, they're actually scuffed to hell, to be, be honest with you, because it's a, it's a workhorse. This isn't a show car. Did it do a good job? It did, up to a point. It wasn't perfect, but it was very, very good. It's not perfect. Depends on the wheels you're doing. This isn't an acid wheel cleaner. This is an all-in-one. It's a fallout remover stroke wheel cleaner, but it does things very, very well. Both things it does well. It cleans deeply, and it brings out that horrible, you know, the brake dust. Easy to use, but it is readily available to use. It's easy, it's just straight in. My only concern is you can rip through this product because it's, it's ready to use. You're not diluting anything. I know you don't dilute fallout remover, but the tendency is to really just go to town on it. It's, I don't know, it's human nature. You tend to use more of it for some unknown reason. Perhaps because it's just good fun, I don't know. But that was that, that was really good. The wheel weasel from CarScope on the fence for this, it's, it's kind of fiddly. Um, you've got to put your fingers through the loops and do all this business. Is it something they didn't really need? Perhaps it is. I tend to use a secondary wash mitt. If you've got smaller hands, you haven't got massive fingers like I've got, like shovel hands, and you can just use a really small wash mitt, those wheel mitts, and get in behind the spokes. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to the tire, now this is a different kettle of fish. That's one of the best tire scrubbing brushes I think I've used to date. It's just the right size, just the right density of bristles, and that's the key. 
I found that the cheap ones, like the Tough Shine ones, um, well, they're not really cheap, but the, the kind of fake ones which model themselves on a Tough Shine brush, there's not enough bristles. You tend to miss bits, they're quite aggressive. Um, and this seems to be just right, just, just the right softness, just the right hardness, and it got rid of all the grime. Use an APC, you can use your wheel cleaner if you want, and it should bring the tires up ready to dress right at the end. So that was that. Um, Pre-wash once again, built hamber. 20 mil you want, it's 10 mil to 500 mil of water. So double it up in a one litre pump spray. If you want to go the route of snow foam lance, you can go for it. You'll just use more product. So that was the pre-wash, which is very, very effective. Did all that and it came to the shampoo stage from high definition detail. I'll put a link to the shampoo below. That smells really nice, this stuff. Nice and glidey, and it still remains in the bucket. So the rest of the stuff from the lance, I'll shoot in the bucket, and I still maintain the foam right at the end. It didn't die in the bucket. Um, I think, I don't know, probably used about 50 mil of product in the end, 50, 60 mil in the lance. You don't have to use it in the lance. You can go in a bucket and just use it traditionally if you want. I just find it just an easier way of doing a vehicle now, and there is... The guys out there are now going down to one bucket. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. There's two cock-ups in this video. Well, it's probably more than that. The first one is driving over the rim mats <laughs> to start with, doing a bit of four before in. And then the next one is me picking up the wrong product for the wrong process. And that's where the water spot remover comes in. Now water spot remover from Gary Therapy is very, very good. Very, very good product. But it won't remove paint, Paul. That's paint. So then I reached for the TARDIS and got rid of the paint. This was an accident from the owner throwing some paint into a skip and then it kind of exploding, then splatting on the back of the truck. So I got rid of it in the end and uh, went on to the next stage, which was a Koshkemi FSC. Now this leaves protection. It leaves, it gets rid of water spots, but it also leaves protection. So I just followed everything up with that. Why didn't they use something which is gonna last longer? It's because the vehicle's coming back to me for a maintenance wash. Am I gonna film it again? Possibly, not too sure. You've already seen it, so but it will be coming back because it's going on holiday. They're going on holiday in the vehicle. So, that was the truck. Sorry I've not been about because <laughs> for those of you who don't know what I do for a living, this is not what I do. I'm actually a track welder. So I work on the, on the railways, uh, on the infrastructure, all around East Anglia, and I mainly do nights. At the moment, I'm doing nights and days. So it's even worse, and that's why I've not been about. I've been a little bit weary. Anyway, we will be back with more videos very, very soon. In fact, we will be back with more stuff from the Mazda garage. Not too sure what we've got there. Possibly Mazdas, might be something else. And in the summer, I think we might be going into the farms. Yes, we could be filming in farmyards. Hmm, yeah, tractors maybe? Hmm, anyway, don't forget to subscribe, keep watching, keep commenting, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm gonna go put my beer in the fridge. ta -ra.